Hi there, this is Math 7, Unit 4, Lesson 9, talking about more and less than 1% today. So we're going to explore percentages that are smaller than 1%, so itty bitty kind of things there. Alright, you began first of all today with talking about some numbers in terms of percentages and doing them with some mental math there. Kind of deciding 10 is what percentage of 50, um, that kind of thing there. Um, for me, when I do mental math, again, you might have your own method here. Um, I just can look, when I look at 50, I recognize that if I move something over, I move a decimal place over one spot, that's going to be a decrease of 10%, right? So 10% in this case here is actually going to be 5. Okay, so if I'm looking at a number like 10, the way I think about it is if 5 is 10%, well 5 plus 5 equals 10. So if I take two 10%, a 10% plus another 10% and add them up, that's going to give me 20%. And that's how I get there. Are there other ways to do that? Probably, but again, you get to figure out how would you do that mentally. If I said five is what percentage of 50, again, I'm moving over one spot there, and I'm left with five, so that one movement of decimal position means it's a 10% to make that move there. So in terms of the next one, one is what percentage of 50? Well, that's gonna be a little different here. So what I might think about is that, well, one out of 50 is what you're talking about, and everything is really out of 100 is part of today's lesson here. So if I was to think about 100, to go from 50 to 100 is multiplying by 2. So 1 times 2 is going to be 2. So we would say 2 out of 100 is 2%. Again, just kind of how I think about it there. But that helps me with this next one when I think about 17 out of 50. Because again, if I'm doing by 2, multiplying by 2 to get from 50 to 100. 17 times 2 is 34, and 34 out of 100 is just simply another way of saying 34% because it's a portion out of 100. Okay, other ways of doing it, that's just one way of thinking about it. So let's move on to today's lesson. We began with a little activity on waiting tables. It says, during one waiter's shift, he delivered 13 appetizers, 17 entrees, and 10 desserts. What well, percentage of the dishes uh, he delivered were desserts, appetizers, entrees? So we're going to find a percentage for each one of these. Recognize, though, that the dessert, it's a percent, when I'm looking at percentage, it's a percent of the whole, or a percent of the total amount of dishes that were served. In this case here, I have a 13, 17, and a 10 for a total of 40 dishes. So the dessert is going to be a portion of that 40. In our case, the dessert was 10 out of 40. Okay, now 10 out of 40 can be reduced to 1 fourth. It's 1 out of 4. All right, which is going to be 1 divided by 4, which is 0.25. And as a percentage, we're going to move the other direction this time. That becomes 25%. If you wanted to think about it like a double, um, like a double tape line, right? Um, we could go from zero, in this case here, to 40, zero to 40, and we could think about 10, 20, 30. And in our situation here, we know there's just 40 dishes all together. 10 right here is going to be at the 25% mark. 40 or 20 is at 50, this is 75, and this is 100. Okay, so in our little tape diagram, double tape diagram, we would say that when we had 10 desserts, 10 desserts is located right here at 25%. So that works out nicely when I have numbers that seem to work with what I can see. When I get to appetizers, appetizers though is 13 out of 40. Well, 13 isn't really on my number line, too, really, is it? I have a 10 and a 20, so I know it's somewhere in between those. It's definitely closer to 25 than it is a 50, but it's somewhere about here, and I don't have a number that lines up there to know what 13 out of 40 is going to be. So in my case, I would just do 13 divided by 40, because that's really what that is, right? It's 13 divided by 40. 
and 13 divided by 40 is 0.325. And to turn that into a percentage, we're gonna move the decimal two places to the right, and we end up with 32.5%. For the entrees, the same idea, we'll do 17 out of 40, and we would just turn that into a division problem, 17 divided by 40, because looking here, 17 is not on my number line very clearly. It's gonna be a little closer to 50 than it is 25, somewhere about there, but I don't have a precise number there. So 17 divided by 40 ends up being 0.425. Move that decimal over two places, and we end up with 42.5%. So what do your percentages add up to? In our case, we had a 25 to begin with, we had a 32.5, and a 42.5. So five plus five is 10, we carry the one. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, carry the one. We have one plus two is three, three more is six, and four make 100. So all together we end up with 100%, which is what it should be. Everything should total 100% because all three of those combined equals the whole, okay? So that's kind of the idea of what we do there. So if we were to have perhaps rounded this, sometimes you might want to round things, right? If you had rounded this to 33%, and if you had rounded this to 43%, what would have happened to your totals? Well, let's see. If I did 33, 43, and 25, and added those up, I'd have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, carry the one, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, I would have ended up with 101%. Something would have been a little bit off there. So the only problem with rounding is sometimes if you round, your total amount is not gonna be very accurate, right? You wanna be precise there if possible. So rounding may not have been the best idea. What's interesting about this problem is we can use a table to also analyze what's happening there. Let's say, for example, if you did the number of dishes, right? And then we talked about the percent of the total. In our first problem, we said that there were 10 dishes, 10 desserts, and 10 desserts happen to be the equivalent of 25%, 25%. Now, this becomes my X and my Y for my normal table stuff we talked about before. And so we could find out what one dish would be, one dish would be by doing some division, right? This becomes 25 divided by 10 for my y over x to find my constant proportionality, which is equal to 2.5. So one dish is actually equal to 2.5%, okay? So one dish is 2.5%. Meaning, if I knew that 10 was 25, to do three more, I would do three times the 2.15, multiply it together, and add it back to 25 to see what's left, right? Or I could do this. I could say, well, I have 13 dishes. Let's multiply that by my K value, 2.5, and 13 times 2.5 is gonna end up with 32.5. And we could do that same thing with 17 or any other number for that matter. Once I know my constant proportionality, I really do have an equation where y equals 2.5x to put it back in terms of what we've studied before. So sometimes you can go back to what you've learned before with making a chart like this with x and y, find a constant proportionality, and use what you know to solve things. Maybe you don't want to do 13 divided by 40 but you're okay doing 13 times 2.5. That works just as well. So there's lots of ways to go about solving these types of problems there. Let's turn the page. 9.3, fractions of a percent. Find each percentage of 60. What do you notice about your answer? So here we go. We have 30% of 60. We're gonna take our decimal, move it over one, two. So we end up with 0.3 times 60, and 0.3 times 60 is 18. Here, 3% with a decimal over two, so we end up with 0.03 times 60, 
and we have an answer of 1.8. Here we move it over to 1, 2, so we end up with 0 0.003 times 60, and we end up with 0 0.18. Here again, two hops, so we have 0 0.0003 times 60, and we end up with 0 0.018. All right, so what do you notice about your answers? Something you might notice is they all have 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8. But what's changing is that each one is one-tenth of the previous answer, right? And that one-tenth means the decimal place is moving over one spot, one spot, one spot, one spot. So that one space is one-tenth. And that's what's happening there again and again. Let's look at number two. It says 20% of 5,000 is 1,000. And 21% of 5,000 is 1,050. Find each percentage of 5,000 and be prepared to explain your reasoning. Okay, well let's do this here. A says 1% of 5,000. Well, here's the thing. If 20% gets you 1,000 and 21% gets you 1,050, what is the value of that 1%? That should be the difference between 1,000 and 1,050. Well, 1,000 minus 1,050 is simply 50. So 50 equals the 1% based upon what was provided up above. If I want to do 0.1%, well, what am I doing? I am going to be decreasing by 10%, right? I'm moving this over there, 10%. So if initially I was at 50 for 1%, if I want 0.1%, I move the decimal over here, and I end up with just simply 5, or I could write 5.0, because that is 1 tenth of 50, okay? Now for my 20.1%, I know that 20% already was 1,000, so that's 1,000 to start with, and I just decided that 0.1% was 5, right? So I'm going to add 5, so that's going to be a total of 1,005, okay? Now for this one, I have the 20, which is 1,000, but now I'm doing 0.4. Well, 0.4 is 4 of those guys, right? So it's going to be 5 times 4, because I'm doing it 4 times. And 5 times 4 is 20, so it's 1,000 plus 20, which equals 1,020 right about there. Okay? So I could use this double number line if I chose to. That could work there. We see this is 20, 21%. So this is 20.1, 20.2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 20.2. We know that 0.1 we said was going to be equal to 5, right? So this became 1,005, which makes this 1,010, 15, 20, right? 25, 30, 35, 40 and 45. So when I look at where is 20.4, I can double check. 1020 and 20.4 is in the same spot. We got the right answer there. Okay, so just a way of looking at there, I could use this double number line to figure that out. Worked out okay this time, right? It doesn't always work out, but that one did, or we could just do the math that way. Number three, 15% of 80 is 12. Got it. And 16% of 80 is 12.8. Find each percentage of 80 and be prepared. Okay, well, let's take a look here. If 15% gave me 12 and 16% gave me 12.8, do we know, are we able to determine what 1% is going to be? Well, I hope so. 1% is going to be the difference between these two. 1% is going to be 0.8 right? Got it, 1%. Here we're going to add 0.1%. 
So if I want to do 0.1%, I'm going to move the decimal over one spot, which means I move this decimal over one spot. So 0.1% is going to be equal to 0 0.08, like so. Okay, that's my, my 0.1%. So if that's my 0.1%, and I add that to my 15, 15 was 12, so 12 plus 0.08 equals 12.08. Now for this one, it's 0 .1 se 0 0.7. So I can take the 0 0.08 and multiply it by 7. I have 6 and 5 and 56, 0.56. Adding that back to my initial 12 gives me 12.56, right? Why did I multiply by 7? Because it's 0.7 which is 0.1 times seven. And that's how I arrived at that answer there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna skip the are you ready for more today? All right, it's an interesting problem about this crazy triangle which you could do if you have some extra time. Population growth, we're gonna look at this one. There's a population of city A was approximately 243,000 people and it increased by 8% in one year. What was a new population? All right, well, let's take a look at it. So we take 100% of the original times 243,000, and we're gonna add an increase of 8%. 8% as a decimal is hop, hop, 0 0.08 times my original, 243,000. I can combine this, the one and the 0 0.08, to have 1.08 times my original population, 243,000. And 1.08 times 243,000 is equal to our new population, which would be 262,440. Again, if you recognize right away that this can just be combined, the 8% plus 100% equals 108%, and move the decimal over to 1.08, you're doing great. The population of city B was approximately 7,150,000 there, and it increased by 0.8% in one year. All right, what was the new population? Wow, okay. So, we're gonna take our initial, right? 7150123, okay? And I'm gonna put this in parentheses and do a little shortcut here, and I'm gonna multiply it by the combination of one plus this value. Well, this was starting at 0.8%, and to make it into a decimal, we have to move over two spaces, one, two. So we put our decimal there, so we're actually gonna be 1.008, 1.008. So I'm gonna put my one for my initial, plus the 0.8%, and multiply that by the population to start with. So 1.008 times 7 million something or other is going to be equal to 7,207,200. All right, and that's what you get there. So as a summary today, let's just remember that a percentage such as 60% is a rate per 100. And so because of that, we're able to move things around nicely in terms of looking at tenths or a portion of things and so that becomes 0.3, and we can move some things around pretty simply. All right, we're going to pause there, and you're going to go ahead and start your homework here, and then come back and check it when you're ready. Okay. Homework time, here we go. So, we have a student government shack sold, snack shop sold 32 items this week. So all combined, all together, our total sales, there were 32 items all sold. For each snack type, what percentage of all snacks were sold of that type? So for the fruit cup, we're gonna be looking at eight out of 32. For the veggie sticks, we're looking at six out of 32. The chips, we're looking at 14 out of 32, and the water is 4 out of 32. For some of these, I can reduce. 8 out of 32 can reduce to 1 fourth. 
and one fourth is a nice one, which is 25%. Okay, not too bad, and I can work with that there. 25% is what eight is gonna be at. Now I could do that for the other ones. I could do some reducing if I chose to, or I could just use a calculator and plug those things in. So six divided by 32, I use the calculator, got me, in this case here, got me 81875, and they gave me decimal there. To make it a percent, we moved over here to make it 18.75%. 14 divided by 32 gave me an answer of 0.4375. To turn that into a decimal, I moved it over two spaces. So I had 43.75%. And 4 divided by 32 reduced down to 1 eighth, which became 0.125. Move the decimal over and we have 12.5% as my solution there. Okay, so the easiest way is just to do the division there. If you want to do the double tape line, you could. Um, I just found it easier to do the division and see what I had. All right, number two. Select all the options that have the same value as 3.5% of 20. 3.5% of 20. So 3.5% of 20 is 3.5% as a percent of 20. If I write this as an equation, I would move this over two spaces and I'd have 0 0.035 of becomes times and 20 like that. Let's take a look what I have over here. Here is 3.5% of 20, which is converting the fraction to a decimal. That's going to work just fine. This is 3 and a half of 20. Well, yeah, three and a half is the same as this, but this is a percent, and this is a regular number. We're looking at a percentage, not the actual number, so that's not going to work. This one does 0 0.35, 0 0.35. That's close, but the decimal didn't move far enough over. It should have gone one more over, so not going to work. We actually want this one right here, 0 0.035. Now E is a little bit different because here you have 7% of 10. You might be thinking to yourself, well, how is that gonna work? It's is a 3.5 of 20, this is 7% of 10. The numbers don't match, what am I doing here? What's going on? Well, let's take a look here. Well, in terms of the 20, okay, let's think about what 1% of 20 is gonna be. If 20 is here, 1% of 20 it's going to be taking the decimal and moving it over there, right? Actually, yeah, it's going to be 10%. So if I want 1%, we're going to move it over even more to here, right? 0.2. Sorry, so 0.2. So 1% of 20 equals 0.2. That's 1%. It's 0.2. So if we're talking about 3.5%, uh, we're talking about 0.2 and a point 0.2, and a point 0.2, whoop, I ran off the page, sorry about that. That's 1%, 2%, 3%, and half a percent is one. That's gonna be two, four, six, that's gonna be 0.7. So three and a half percent of 20 is actually 0.7. So 7% of 10, well, let's look at 10. Here's 10, okay, and if I look at that one number there, 7%, well, let's do this. 1% is gonna be 0.1. So 1% of 10 equals 0.1. So if I did 7%, 0 0.1 times seven is 0.7. Well, do those match? They sure do. So believe it or not, 7% of 10 is actually the same as three and a half percent of 20. What's interesting here is that I am doubling 3.5 times two to go that way, and I'm actually reducing in half to go that way. This becomes a times two, and this becomes a divided by two. So there's a similarity there in the way those are, are, are connected. But we'll get that maybe another time. All right, 22% of 65 is 14.3. What is 22.6% of 65? All right, let's take a look at it. How do you want to do that? Well, here's one way of thinking about it. 
22% of 65 is 14.3. We know that's going to be the case. Okay. So if I look at a number like 65, okay, and I want to get out to mess with a 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 10% is going to be one decimal, 1% 1 is going to be two decimal hops, right? This is 10%. 1% gets me here. And if I do a three decimal hops, that's a 0 0.1%. 0.1%. So that's a 0.065. So 0 0.065 is going to be the value of 0.1%. So 0.1% of that number is 0 0.065. I want to get six of those together because that's 0.1. So if I multiply by six, right, to get 0.6. So if I take this number and multiply it by six, 0 0.065 times 6 is equal to 0 0.390. Now that's the 0 0.6 part. I need to add that back though to the 14.3. 14.3. So when I add that up, I have 0, 096 and the 14 is there. So 14.690 is what I have in this situation there. Okay, kind of a good little problem. Number four, a bakery used 30% more sugar this month than last month. If you used 560 last month, how much did this month? All right, well, 30% more means it's going to be 130% of the initial amount, right? So think back before, I'm doing a kind of a shortcut here, that becomes 1.30 times the initial amount, 560. 1.30 times 560 is equal to 728 kilograms of sugar. If you're not sure where that came from, think back to before. It was 1 times 560 plus 30%, which becomes 0 0.30 times 560. And then we combine 1 and 0.3 to 1.30 times the 560. So that was my shortcut. I did all that by just jumping ahead to going right there. Okay, number five, we're gonna match each diagram to each situation and you can use them more than once. Let's take a look here at number five. Okay, it says the amount of apples this year decreased by 15%. So we're going down, going down 15%. So our, our last year versus this year it's a decrease of 15 percent this is a showing a decrease this one here showing an increase of 15 percent so the decrease one we're going to say a the amount of pairs this year is 85 percent of last year's amount that means it's less it's less than 100 that's a drop of 15 percent again that would also be a the amount of cherries this year increased by 15 percent we're growing from what we had, we're increasing by 15%. B makes the most sense there. And this one, we're combining the 100% and the 15 to end up with 115%. Growing again for B. All right, and number six. Finally, the last one today. A certain type of car has room for four passengers. Write an equation relating the number of cars in to passengers P, okay? So every time I have a car, I have a certain number of passengers, right? So when I have one car, I get four passengers. And that's the way that's gonna work there, correct? Okay, now our car value, it said we're gonna call that N, and our passengers we're gonna call P. I'm just gonna just kind of lightly cross that off there. This becomes my X and my Y. So what is my constant proportionality? It's four over one, which equals four, All right? That's my constant proportionality. Normally we would do Y equals our constant proportionality times X. In this case, we're gonna do P, that's our Y, right? Equals our constant proportionality, which is four, times our X value, which in this case is N. So my equation is P equals four N. So four times the number of cars will give me the number of passengers. Let's use this now to solve these problems. 
How many passengers could fit in 78 cars? Well, passengers equals 4 times 78, and 4 times 78 is equal to 312 passengers. How many cars, which is in, would be needed for 78 passengers? So we set it up 78 equals 4 times in. To solve for n, we divide both sides by 4. 78 divided by 4 is going to be equal to 19.5 cars. You can't have 0.5 cars and you can't leave somebody on the side of the road. So we're going to have to round that up to 20. That's it for today. Hope you had a great one and we'll see you next time.